Greetings, friends. May you be blessed in this brief devotional journey. And thank you for joining us. The last few months have certainly seen a lot of changes. You know, it's a wise saying that we can cope with change, but we struggle with the rapidity of change. And of course, you've sensed all sorts of changes in your own lives. And there's a lot of speculation and a lot of prediction about how different things are going to be once the pandemic is over, this pandemic that has touched us all. I'm amazed at just how much we are using online communication. Perhaps some of you are as well. And we're doing it not out of convenience, but more out of necessity my wife and I were very blessed to receive a gift from a friend. It was a gift of some delivered meals. And this dear friend had ordered these meals online from a local restaurant and they were delivered to our door. Yes, we're all entering a whole new world of online shopping. And not only shopping, but as you know, many folk are working online from home. Even if your head office is halfway across the world, you can still be productive through your computer and the internet, let alone that other wonderful form of communication, which is the extension of your right hand, and that's your telephone. Yes, even the church is facing the need to communicate in any way possible with the church family. The internet is flooded with online devotions, homilies, sermons and studies. And some of us might find the virtual services and the virtual talks to be limited because they seem to lack just the human warmth and presence of other people that we are accustomed to when we're in a church. But, my friends, we do need to accept the online contact with each other as a gift and to remember that this was not possible in the past for other generations. And they experienced a lockdown in many other forms. Now, in this time of devotion, I want to share a theme on prayer. And it's called Staying Online with the Lord, staying online with the Lord. But we'll journey through a few cameos of scripture. But first, let's ask the Spirit for the ears to hear his word. Let us pray. Loving and eternal God, by your most Holy Spirit, reveal the word behind the word. Behind the printed word, the movement of your spirit and the desire that is in your heart to connect with us, to stay connected with us, your prime creation, to call us into the intimacy of the relationship that you have created. And we pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ and in his most precious name. Amen. Well, my friends, this staying online reminds me of a scripture prayer from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. And Paul speaks about prayer as a continuous prayer. He says, Rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. And he goes on to say, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. He will do it. 
What a great encouragement from St. Paul. At the heart of this little passage, Paul uses this phrase, pray continually. The old King James Version, you may remember, says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Mm, that's not easy. But it means and calls us not to a sporadic prayer or to what we may call emergency prayer, only when we need to pray, not a catch-up prayer, but a broke, unbroken and a constant tuned-in conversation that means staying on line with the Lord continually staying on line with the Lord. This changes the deep meaning of praying online. When we use the word pray as a verb, we really should think of it as inviting us to a relationship. It's not just action, but rather it's the description of an unchanging condition of being in the presence of the Lord. When you live with someone that you love every day, you have conversation with them continually. It's the relationship that makes the conversation and gives meaning to it. And you don't pop in and out of the relationship in the same way you don't move in and out of prayer, the prayer relationship with God. You don't just pray and then go away and the line is broken. But how do we stay on line with the Lord? I'm going to give you an example from Genesis 24, an old example where Isaac is literally hunting for a wife. Oh, he's praying for a wife. And we find him next to a spring on the outskirts of a village, and this is what happens. And then Isaac prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today, and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I'm standing beside the spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one that you've chosen for me, your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you shown, you've shown kindness to my master. And before he'd finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on the shoulder. Wow! <laughs> that reminds me of a song you might remember. There she was, just a walking down the street, singing, Do what diddy diddy dum diddy do. <laughs> what a beautiful lesson. Now you may say, Oh, it's just a coincidence. You know, Isaac happened to be in the right place at the right time. Or you may say that, you know, Re Rebecca would been has been hiding behind a rock and she overheard Isaac's prayer and she said, oh boy, this is my chance. And she wasted no time and she had the initiative to come out in full view with her jar on her shoulder. Uh, these are humorous ways of looking at it. But you know, when we look deeply into Isaac's prayer, there's something beautiful about it. And that is the way in which Isaac prays. Isaac uses such simple language, direct language. He speaks to the Lord directly. He speaks as if the Lord is standing next to him. He prays as if the Lord has entered his Isaac's immediate situation, Isaac's immediate plea, and sharing in this prayer his deepest need. It just pours out 
as simple as it is, as ordinary as the direct as it is. Isaac is talking to the Lord as if the Lord is here, present. Just as you would speak to a friend. Just as you would speak to that person with whom you are living every day. Someone who's always in your immediate presence. His prayer is not like an email sent into space asking for a reply or a request to be someone's friend on a Facebook, hoping for a response. No, his prayer spills out of a vital and living and natural relationship with the Lord. He doesn't have to make contact with God. He's already in connection with the Lord. And Isaac's connection with the Lord has never been broken. That's how this man prays. He prays from inside the relationship with God. And that's being online with the Lord. I recall a, a book by a past missionary and Christian writer many years ago, a man by the name of Frank Lobach. And Lobach spoke about using arrow prayers. Very simply this, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever the situation, whatever the moment might be, just send an arrow prayer. Steal that moment and send an arrow prayer to God. He's online all the time, you see. There's no need for the formality that sets up a special kind of communication with God. God's line is open all the time. Sometimes the nation needs to get online with God. In 1 Samuel there's a, a beautiful example of a moment in the history of the nation when they weren't online with God. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 12. At this point in Israel's history, the people realise that they have damaged their relationship with God. Their relationship with the Lord used to be that he was their one and only king. But because they wanted to be like other nations around them, they demanded to have their own king. And despite the prophet's warning, they persisted. In this passage, the nation acknowledges that their denial of the sole sovereignty of God has been a national sin. And they come to Samuel the prophet and they request him to pray on their behalf. And the passage says, Then Samuel called on the Lord, and that same day, the Lord sent thunder and rain, so all the people stood in awe of the Lord and of Samuel. And the people all said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants, so that we will not die, for we have added to all our other sins the evil of asking for a king. Don't be afraid, Samuel replied. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Now two things are clear. The first is that they didn't have the relationship with God within which they could pray. The nation couldn't pray. That relationship had been damaged. And the second thing is, Samuel had that relationship with God undamaged. He was online and he could pray to the Lord on their behalf. And so Samuel pleads for the nation and for the forgiveness of their sin. 
And Samuel's prayer is heard by God because of his relationship with the Lord. He was online. The nation was offline. We often pray for the land. But how do we pray for the land? And how does the land pray? How does the nation pray? In Second Chronicles 7.14, that well-known verse says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. When the nation humbles itself, the relationship with the Lord is restored. When the nation seeks his face, the relationship is restored. When the nation repents, the relationship is restored. When the nation gets back on line, the prayer is heard. But finally, we have to look at how Jesus prays. Now two of the apostles describe the scene where Jesus prays and you will know the scene so well. And the first one is in Matthew 26. The word says, Then he, Jesus, returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you not have watched with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. Powerful passage. Here we are asleep while Jesus prays. Asleep because we cannot be vigilant with him. Asleep because we cannot journey with him. Asleep because we cannot companion him in his hour of greatest pain. And so Jesus prays alone. And only Jesus in this moment in that garden is online with the Father. The disciples are not online. How Jesus prays. Luke puts it another word, another way. And his word is this. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Every drop of his prayer was like a drop of blood, says Luke. Every drop of his prayer, gave up something, let go something, let go the alternatives to facing the cross, let go the temptations to become a political king, let go every temptation that the devil presented him on that mount of temptation, let go every fear that humanity could experience, let go every hatred of every enemy. Let go every inclination to put self before the sacrifice. And when he'd finished praying, he went to his cross. Oh, if only we could pray like Jesus. If only we could pray like Jesus. 
If only we could kneel before the Father the way Jesus kneels before him. If only we could let go every resistance between us and God, every excuse, every selfish protest, every drop of self, and pray in such a way that we want what God wants for us. We want his will. Then we are praying inside the relationship. And the line can never be broken. Never be broken. Ah, oh, my friends. Why not go into the intimacy of God's presence? Don't carry your burdens without praying. Don't carry the desires of your heart without praying. Get back online. God's already online waiting for your prayer. And may it strengthen you. How beautiful the words of that old hymn. So old, so familiar, but so true. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Thank you for sharing this devotion. May the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.